How's it going everybody? Wayne here. Today I thought we'd go game hunting, but not alone. Today we're going to go game hunting with the grown ass nerd. Hey guys, let's go game hunting. Alright, the first stop is a hard off junk section and I find something pretty interesting. Some American N64 games that I don't have yet. Madden 2001. Madden 2001, Madden 64, and Madden 99, which I actually have Madden 99, so I put that one back. <laughs> We didn't really find anything else at Hard Off, so it's off to Mango Suko. Golden 64 controllers in the box. Nice. Roughly $36, $37. Yep. Yeah. You gonna grab them? Yep. They got, yeah, they got two of them, huh? Yeah. Oh, you want one? Nope, I'm gonna pass. Okay. You're the guy. Cool. I got them to open the glass case and now I'm just checking the condition. These things are still in their original plastic bags. They're really nice condition. It's really nice to find Golden 64 controllers complete in the original box. Nice shirt. Have it. Looking at the Famicom games, nothing's really catching my eye, but I did find a Dreamcast and a Saturn game. Sweet. Sonic Adventure and Croc. The next store we were going to was pretty far away, so we decided to grab some food first, and we went to Lawson's. It's always fun going into Lawson's, you never know what you're going to find. You end up buying a lot of extra food just because half the stuff you're looking at you really don't know what it is. You don't know if it's going to be good or not. So you end up buying a lot of extra food just in case you strike out on a couple of meals there. Usually you're good with the bakery items so I tend to stick with them except this moldy looking thing. Here's the mango suku we were just at and it's off to the next store. Stuff Lots of N64 consoles. I've noticed there's been more on the shelves and they've been sitting there a long time and the prices have started to go down on these. There's a Spice Orange GameCube. There's some Dreamcast and Saturns and a PC Engine Core Graphics. I feel really bad for the workers here because the same music here at Hard Off just plays over and over again all day. They probably hear it in their sleep. I do like this Hard Off because they have a lot of rare games that I haven't seen anywhere else. And there's a lot of games for systems that you don't see anywhere else. Like, I just picked up some Virtual Boy games the other week. They had a bunch of complete and box games for the Virtual Boy, which you don't see very often. Didn't really find anything at Hard Off, so we moved to the Mango Suko right next door. And here's a Neo Geo CD. And I think the reason we find more games that are more uncommon down here is because this is in a bigger city. So there's a lot more traffic to these stores where people come in and turn things in. So you can typically find better things down in these stores for a cheaper price. Checking out the PS2 games, I find a pretty interesting looking game called U Underwater Unit. Whoa, the love song. Finally at the last door of the night I'm checking out the PS1 games and I stumble across a pretty interesting game I don't have. It's two shooters in one and that is Raystorm and Ray Crisis. Door has some pretty nice consoles. There's a Duo RX, 
Neo Geo AES system, loose. Man, those things are expensive. Sega SG-1000. Coming down here, there's a Sega Saturn and some Sega Dreamcast. There's a Game Gear complete in box and a PC Engine Core graphics. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. The first thing we got were two gold N64 controllers complete in box. And these things are in awesome condition. Usually when you find gold controllers out in the wild, they're all scratched up, loose. They've got chafing on the bottom of them. The paints come off. And these things don't look like they've ever been used. The sticks are really tight. There's not a mark anywhere on them. They're the best condition gold controllers I've ever seen. I found these, there were two in the case and they were about $35 each. And after I bought them, I walked around the store some more and they brought out a third one. But the box on the third one was trash, so I passed on that one. But these are in awesome condition and I'm really excited to have found these. All right, next up we have a PS2 game and that game was U Underwater Unit. Underwater Unit was published by Irem and released for the PS2 in 2002. Underwater Unit is a submarine combat game. Imagine an ace combat game, but with subs. Your mission is to seek and destroy enemies. Your sub has the ability to shoot bullets and missiles. There are a good variety of enemies, other subs, underwater mines, and depth charges. You also find yourself being able to surface the submarine where you'll find enemy aircraft that you'll be able to take out as well. After buying the game, I found out this game actually released in the US under the name Sub Rebellion. And you can find the game for about $10 complete which is about a third of what I paid for it. The graphics are good, and the gameplay is fun. The sonar system guides you through the levels, helping you seek out the enemies. If you like shooters and submarines, this game is well worth checking out. And it's cheap. As long as you get a copy of the US version. Next up we have a PS1 game, and that game is Overdrive M4. I actually only bought this game because it has a skyline on the front, and I have a skyline, so... I went ahead and bought the game. Unfortunately, the game requires you to know a lot of Japanese um, to navigate the menus. But once you actually figure out where to go in the game, it's pretty good. The graphics are alright. The controls are good. Overall though, I only picked up the game because it was cheap and it had a skyline on it. Next up, we have a Dreamcast game that the Grown Ass Nerd actually helped me find and that game is Sonic Adventure. Unfortunately, my Dreamcast is having technical difficulties so I couldn't record the gameplay for this one but it was only about five dollars so once I do get my Dreamcast up and going again it'll be nice to check this one out. Next up we have a Saturn game and that game is Croc Pow Pow Island. Croc was published by Mitsui Media Quest and released for the PS1 and Sega Saturn in 1998. This game is the Japanese version of Croc Legend of the Gabos. Croc is a platforming game. You'll run around the levels collecting crystals that you'll lose if you get hit by an enemy. If you get hit by an enemy and you don't have any crystals, the enemies will kill you. It's just like collecting the rings in a Sonic game. You also collect keys that open doors and cages. This game could have been really fun, but it has a major turnoff. The controls. The controls are terrible. Also with bad controls comes bad camera angles. This game was completely ruined because of these factors. This game could have been great. Finally, the last game is a PS1 game. It's a combination of two shoot 'em ups, and that's Ray Storm and Ray Crisis. Ray Storm and Ray Crisis are shoot 'em up games, and they were brought together on one CD in the Simple 1500 series on the PS1. Ray Storm and Ray Crisis were developed by Taito. Both games have the same controls and mechanics. They feature a lock-on system that help you deal out serious damage to enemies. The graphics are good and the gameplay is fun on both games. For two shooters in one, you can't go wrong, especially because this game isn't very expensive. I got this game for only about $12. And that's it for Japanese pickups. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be bringing you more videos like this. Until next time, I'm Wayne. And I'm Grown Esther. And thanks for watching.